Meghan Markle got a pair of designer jeans and some dungarees for Archie today as she visited a Johannesburg art studio without her son or Prince Harry. The Duchess of Sussex was spotted deep in conversation with artists, while she toured the Victoria Yards in Johannesburg, a regeneration project that is home to design studios, art galleries and a popular monthly food market. It is understood that Meghan, wearing a navy midi-length Wilfred by Aritzia shirt dress and red slingback flats by Everlane, left son Archie in the care of his nanny so she could sample some of the city's creative vibes. Meghan appeared to be bowled over when she collected the pair of designer jeans commissioned from one of South Africa's up-and-coming brands. She could only say oh my, oh my when she was saw the skinny fit jeans, and when a tiny pair of dungarees, made for her son Archie, were handed over she exclaimed very cute. Lezzetti Masmola, manager of Chpo's showroom, that features the company's workshops and studios, said, from what we've seen on the internet she's the type of person who loves skinny fit so that's what we made. When she saw the jeans the words she said were oh my, oh my she was very impressed she loved the jeans she said she couldn't wait to try them on and said wow. And when she saw the dungarees she said very cute, I think they are very, very lovely. Meghan's designer jeans cost 2,100 South African Rand, 113 pounds, but for the Archie's dungarees Mr. Masmala said, that was a special order we've never done before so I couldn't give you a price. The mother of one was later mobbed by awestruck children who she gleefully hooked, while a boy dressed in red just behind her showed his shock at seeing a member of the royal family. Meghan, who looked animated and smiled throughout the trip, then chatted to the youngsters and had a look at some of the budding artists' own drawings. Meghan was also wearing a distinctive pair of studded black earrings she had picked up in Cape Town from a local ethical designer, Pichulik, for just £46. The brand takes its inspiration from ancient traditions, myth and an experimental use of materials and celebrates empowering feminine narratives, perfect for the feminist duchess. She also visited Young Bucks, a small business that hand makes books from recycled materials, and her final stop was Chpo. Meghan also toured a small market exhibiting some of the items you can find at Victoria Yards, and listened to a performance by Belitin Andre, a spoken word artist. The Duchess's official Instagram account said, while in Johannesburg today, the Duchess of Sussex visited Victoria Yards, which celebrates the power of community, bringing local artisans and makers together to rebuild, support and learn from each other on a holistic level. It was an exceptional afternoon where the Duchess had the chance to connect with the children and founders of the phenomenal program for kids development Timbuktu in the valley. She was also struck by the local denim designer who founded eponymous brand Chpo who shared this info about the logo for his line, The crown on my jeans represents the three ladies who raised me. Enjoy wearing this crown. Such a beautiful and touching sentiment. Artists, artisans, sculptors, metal workers and carpenters are all part of the fabric of Victoria Yards but it also utilizes the power of the DICE program which supports several other local organizations and their work with marginalized youth and women. These include, 94 Colors, run by the Duchess Guides for the Day, Hector and Saibu Sizo, CDP, a development program for young unemployed and marginalized women that provides training to start creative enterprises, Eng, rebuilds the confidence and self-belief of unemployed youth through training and practical experience. 26 feet 10 inches south, an architecture firm designing a local youth center, and Reimagination, works with local secondary school students to create a social and creative enterprising mindset. Meanwhile the Duke of Sussex shared an image of Baobab trees he took during a visit to Lune National Park, Malawi on the eighth day of the Royal Tour of Africa. One picture shared to the National Geographic's Instagram account showed Harry lying on the floor holding the camera, and the other the picture he captured of the trees above. The Prince is today managing the magazine's social media platform to launch a campaign called Looking Up, and will invite users to share their own pictures of trees from around the world. He wrote, Hi everyone. I'm so happy to have the opportunity to continue working with National Geographic and to guest edit this Instagram account, it's one of my personal favorites. Today I'm in Lune National Park, 
Milawe an important stop on our official tour of Southern Africa, planting trees for the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy. As part of this takeover, I am inviting you to be a part of our Looking Up social campaign. To help launch the campaign, here is a photograph I took today here in Leund of Baobab trees. He added, I will be posting my favorite images from at Nat Geo photographers here throughout the day, and over on at Susk Royal I will be sharing some of my favorite images from everything you post. I can't wait to see what you see. The campaign launch comes it comes as the prince insisted that protecting nature is fundamental to our survival and should not be dismissed as hippie. Harry is currently on the eighth day of his official tour in Africa. Harry and Meghan have their own Instagram account, where they share charity posts and upload recent pictures of their son Archie. Buckingham Palace said that Harry's passion for trees and forests is inspired by the work he does on behalf of his grandmother, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen's Commonwealth Canopy was launched in 2015 when Commonwealth countries were invited to submit forests and national parks or plant trees to preserve in the Queen's name. Almost 50 countries are taking part and have already dedicated indigenous forests for conservation, or have committed to planting millions of new trees to help combat climate change. The Duke has launched 15 of the QCC projects across the world including in the Caribbean, UK, New Zealand, Australia, and Tonga. During their Royal Highness's tour of Africa, there will be two more national parks committed to the project, as well as a tree planting initiative with school children in Botswana. Harry is currently on the eighth day of his 10-day official tour in Africa. Harry and Meghan have their own Instagram account, where they share charity posts and upload recent pictures of their son Archie. Today the Duke of Sussex said conservation is fundamental to our survival and should not be dismissed as hippie. Writing in the Daily Telegraph on Monday, Harry said that to make progress humans needed to overcome greed, apathy and selfishness and that it was essential to learn from past mistakes to protect the world's most valuable assets. The Duke also warned of vast ecosystems set ablaze in Africa, communities destroyed for short-term gain, and said that a natural order between humans and wildlife must be restored. He added, this may well sound hippie to some. But we cannot afford to have a them or us mentality. Humans and animals and their habitats fundamentally need to coexist or within the next 10 years our problems across the globe will become even more unmanageable. Nature teaches us the importance of a circular system, one where nothing goes to waste and everything has a role to play. If we interfere with it, rather than work with it, the system will break down. Conservation used to be a specialist area driven by science. But now it is fundamental to our survival and we must overcome greed, apathy and selfishness if we are to make real progress. The column comes ahead of his visit to Malawi's Liu National Park on the eighth day of a tour of Southern Africa to highlight conservation and anti-poaching work. The Duke, who is on a 10-day tour of Africa, yesterday said a major collaborative approach across agencies, borders and continents is needed to end the poaching of Africa's iconic animals such as rhinos and elephants. At a reception at the official residence of Britain's High Commissioner to Malawi Holly Tet, the Duke said on Sunday, it is only by working together across agencies, borders and continents that we can finally put an end to the illegal wildlife trade crime that continues to deprive local communities of some of their most valuable natural resources. He went on to say, at the event in the capital a long way, that poaching hampers development and undermines the rule of law and praised the nation's ability to track down the poachers. The Duke said, Guardsman Matthew Talbot was unfortunately killed a few months ago in the line of duty but the relationship between the British military and the Malawian Rangers remains strong. Earlier on Sunday the Duchess of Sussex surprised a classroom of female charity workers with a Skype call during Prince Harry's solo visit to Malawi. Appearing on a television screen in the library of the Nolakule College of Education in Lilongwe, Meghan Markle, 38, waved hello from Johannesburg as the group of young women burst into song for her. Prince Harry introduced his wife before the surprise appearance, as she joked about their four-month-old son who has joined them on their 10-day tour of Africa, saying, Archie is taking a nap. 
The Duke of Sussex was given a warm and energetic reception at the college on his visit to learn how girls have been kept in school by campaign for female education. The Duchess of Sussex revealed that she used to teach bookbinding classes as she secretly visited a social enterprise scheme in Johannesburg today. Meghan privately visited the Victoria Yards Initiative, which brings together local artisans, charities and startups, and is supported by the British Council. Meghan bought three little blank notebooks from an organization called Young Bucks, which uses recycled goods to bind books, made by local interns. Meghan's were made from an upcycled local fabric called Ch, a dyed and printed fabric used to make colorful South African clothing. Simon Sismazin, co-director of the Makers Valley Partnership, which has helped to create the collective, said, she bought these three little notebooks and also mentioned that she used to do workshops in book binding herself. She used to coach book binding. A royal aide confirmed that the Duchess did used to teach a book binding class but was not aware of any further details. She also picked up a pair of jeans she had placed on order from a local firm and was given a pair of little dungarees for her baby son Archie. The handmade presidential slim fit trousers were made by up and coming designer Chpo, from the township of Soweto, who revealed that he received a call four weeks ago from the British consular officials. The Duchess of Sussex placed an order for a pair of jeans and today she came to collect them personally. I, surprised her with a pair of dungarees for Archie and the rest is history, he revealed. Shpo started as a one-man band but now employs ten local people in his business. The Duchess was shown round the collective by Mr. Sismazin and Hector Mjiba, a social entrepreneur from 94 Colors, which uses art to mobilize young people in their community and Saibusa Zozulu, founded of Sneakers for Change. Megan was particularly taken with the organization, which collects and donates trainers to those less fortunate and viewed a display made from some of the sports shoes. As she left Victoria Yards, which was used as an old nappy factory, laundry and panel beaters before being developed into artisan studios, Megan told the men, I'll never forget what you have told me. Mr. Sizzlemazin said, the Duchess was really interested in the concept here and how we are working towards the greater good. We are really trying to build a culture of change making. She said that in her position she wants to try and do as much good as she can, although I am slightly paraphrasing here. She loved the way we are working with the community and what we are trying to achieve. It is a microcosm of South Africa here, and it really dovetails with what she wants to do. We had a long conversation about change and change makers and what we can all do. Although we are members of the Commonwealth, we aren't as obsessed by the royal family, but we were really impressed by her and what she wants to do. 